Hi everyone and welcome back. So this is part two of our previous video. That was part one where we created a baseline structure for the Prisma APIs. Uh, I mean, we wanted to create a blog APIs where we have the entities, users, comments, comments, tag, uh, articles, all those entities. And now we are going to use Prisma client APIs to run all different kind of uh, database operations. Before that, let's take a look on some documentation. And here we have Prisma models. This is how we are defining the relations in the Prisma model. You can see the user and the post that we have already done like one to many kind of relationship where user can write multiple posts. So this is how you will define the association. Here author ID will be a foreign key in the post table referring to the primary key ID of user table. Okay, and then I wanted to use, I wanted to see what Prisma client API provides, like simple CRUD operation, where you can do insert, update, delete, like create, read, update, delete. So how, first of all, how we do create. So prisma.user.create, I can zoom it a little bit. And then let's say I wanted to do something more than that. So here inside create, you can just define the post, right? And you can also include the post like user has a post relationship. So you can also associate post there. So it will create a user first and then it will create a post. Create multiple records. You can do a create many. So the first API we can understand like prisma.user.prisma.entityName.create. Right. And then there is another API in the Prisma client create many. Okay. So now if you wanted to read. Like if we wanted to do find unique and this is the where close. These queries are kind of similar which what you have done in the SQLize or the typo RM. You are passing the where close where email equal to this and it is doing find unique. Uh, find unique by ID. It's like find one by ID. Okay. And here like this is the composite key we have and here you can do uh, composite find like prisma dot find unique based on the year quarter right and here you can specify the parameters so it's like compound id you wanted to do a where close with a year and the quarter right and here you can specify the unique constraint time period id so the same constraint name because here i i have seen the lot of alias happening in the prisma model also like here i put the unique unique constraint name as a time period ID. So I can specify the same where time period ID equal to this, right? So to retrieve the time period by the unique qualifier, we can also use this custom identifier name. Get all records, it's like find many, specify null, specify empty where close, find first. Now here you can see the nesting, you can see. Prisma.user.find where post, and some likes greater than 100 and order by descending right so it's like some kind of filtering is happening here ends with find when your email ends with prisma.io like we do like query similarly here we can actually do starts with ends with and then find by multiple fields like you can also do the nesting of and and or like sql queries is something like select star from this table where this equal to this and this equal to this and this equal to that, right? So here what we are doing, this is an array. That means this is an or condition. Uh, do we have SQL generated for it? It's like find many where, where name equal to name starts with E and profile views greater than zero. I think these both close are end close. And so what do we have here is these two clothes are inside or so it's the query will be like this select star from user where name starts with E or profile views greater than zero and role equals to admin. So this is the end clause for both this is the or close or close means the outside is the or and inside these two properties we have and close okay so here also you can do select okay this is the condition where close and i wanted to select only particular columns from the uh, select query 
like this is going to return only email and name okay i think we can also get the cli output for some of the queries here you can see what it is going to return here we are doing email and then this is like user and the post so what we are trying to do is we are trying to get the email and the post also should be there with likes true so user has posts right user already has a relationship with the post so you can actually do the nesting select right i mean posts posts is not inside a user entity but here we are actually fetching the, it's like a lazy loading where you can actually define the if the ref association is already there you can get the data from another table inside the same query so email posts these are the likes because we are selecting only the likes for these two records okay here you can also include true like uh, if you wanted to include the another table data in the same query like prisma.user.find many if role is admin return those and also include the post for those all users right so what it is doing you can see it is returning the posts empty or uh, whatever the post this user has submitted so you don't need to do much of thing if you wanted to include the the foreign key table data inside the original query then simple update this is the where close and this is the data simple using update multiple record update many this is simple update and this is update many then we have absurd right so what it will do is absurd if the record doesn't exist it will create it it otherwise it will uh, update it delete simple delete and then there is a delete many delete all the records you can just do delete many keep the clause empty that means it is going to uh, delete all the records delete with where clause okay uh, so this is all about the prisma client apis and we are going to use these all different methods delete delete many update update many find find many find unique uh, insert insert many all these uh, prisma client apis while writing the apis so here the last thing we can talk about the select and the filtering like this is all about select and filtering so here you can specify the filter condition which we have already seen these kind of queries and you can also do aggregation pagination and all relation queries if you wanted to fetch the data of a relationship table you can do includes api or the select api right this is called the eager loading means while fetching the primary key table data you wanted to fetch the reference table data this is eager loading i mean most of the time we don't want it to fetch the, the the data from the foreign key table but eager loading means from the primary source return the data in the nested object so there is a select api or the includes api there is select api and includes api for that and we have a couple of more things pagination aggregation grouping transactions null undefined a lot of things we will come to that when we are writing our apis through uh, these CRUD operations, uh, articles, uh, users, comments, tag, for those we already have created the models in our code base. So now let's uh, create our application. So we already have index.ts, everything is set up. We just have empty folders. Now we can start creating Express Server. So first of all, we can import Express and we are writing Express type script so we are importing express from express couple of more modules i mean we have we have used this kind of code many times so i will not focus much on explaining explaining things we got the express instance then we are going to use some couple of middlewares like chorus middleware cross origin resource sharing for that we have to import this okay and we have we have to import routes routes we will create inside the routes folder let's say inside routes we have routes.ts file and then uh, that's it so we will enable all the middlewares like um, we can use a body parser i mean body parser is now 
deprecated we can use express one only like simply express dot json this is same as the body parser registering body parser app dot use and we will register all our routes this is how we do it and we can also set the public directory and this is express dot static the directory name I mean if you have any public directory you can specify that here and then app dot get just a simple hello world kind of so we have a request request is of type request and then we have response which is of type response and here we are just saying response.json here we can set status with just a simple message API is running it's kind of a health check endpoint and we can import request and response from express cannot find okay this is a callback so simple we have created express app here closing this and that and we have to listen to a particular port we can also use a swagger ui like if you have a swag i mean that depends on us if you wanted to write a swagger yml swagger ui from swagger ui express and then we can actually write a document endpoint that will be app.use api docs it will serve this swagger document and now finally we also need to import the swagger document this is nothing but a json file swagger doc from let's say we have document we can create a document actually outside so let's say we have a json file there this is just optional if you wanted to expose your apis through swagger yml then this this will expose your all your documents from there and we will just create a simple sample document there inside swagger yml inside document we can put a empty swagger json so here we have okay now we need to just uh, start the application by listening to a particular port app.listen and we can also add on to some error middleware error handler middleware right so we can simply say app.use and this is just a middleware function which takes error request response right and what we wanted to say here is just like uh, expose the error codes if uh, we are not able to intercept any other er error then return 500 okay now we can just listen to the port app dot listen with the callback onto a particular port i'm just doing a copy paste because this is we have done this many times and http exceptions <coughs> so http exceptions we can create let's say inside utils i can create http dot ts it's nothing but an http exception we can create our own custom extends error so this is just a simple http exception class which we are exporting from here and then here we will import that http exception this we can import next function is part of express 
now we need to define the routes okay like we are going to have a user routes uh, article routes comments routes and tag routes so inside routes uh, let's create routes.ts file so index.ts here we have routes.ts right currently it's empty we will use the express router to define all the routing router from express and from this we are going to export default router instance of router and we are using i mean we are just putting global prefix to all the routes api okay and now i can create api router const api equal to router and here we can say router.use when we are talking about all these things so i can have like all the other controllers so i am just having auth controller so because i am going to create a user apis first which is like uh, create user register user uh, login user and all these things and i can create auth controller import auth controller from so we do have we have to go outside and then there is a controllers and then there you will create auth dot controllers that's it similarly we can create other controllers and we can create chain here like app dot use some other controller let's say article controller right and here i can specify that this is just another controller from let's say i just put another name okay that's it so here i have created my routes and then we need to move to the controllers and inside controllers we can create our auth.controller auth dot controllers dot ts and similarly we also need one more controller just for an example article dot controller so inside controller add new file article dot controller dot ts okay now auth controller auth controller is all about uh, some apis related to the user so how we define the the routes and all these things right so here const router i'm creating the instance of router here and we will i will export the router from this file i mean all the controllers will follow the same syntax this is same express application i'm nothing i'm not doing anything fancy here and we can get the router from express import router from express other than that we will also need a request response and let's say next function okay now we can define all our methods here what all methods we have router dot here you can put get put post delete router dot post let's say my first route is create users which is you can call it as a sign up okay and here a sync here i have a same request is of type request let's say request response and next there is a callback and here we will do stuff okay and we can specify the type request is of type request response is of type response next is of type next function so it's kind of a template we will use it everywhere and here i always prefer try catch because it's a sync function can throw something on us and we have to catch it and if it is throwing then just next error because we already have a middleware error middleware to catch this thing 
and here we are talking about users so first of all i will get something from request.body and then let's say i can call create user and here create user i have to define this method and i will be passing request dot body inside that body we are passing user object okay now this create user we can create a service let's say i am creating auth service here auth service dot ts there we will define this method create user so it completes the end to end flow i will just import this thing import create user from go outside inside services auth service dot ts there we will define it so if uh, we are able to create the user we got the user object so what if, what we can say is response dot json and i will just return this user object and this is a sync await right so create user is a method we have to define inside a service and that will deal what to do with this request body we, are, we can also do the joy validations for this payload that okay all the required attributes are available in the payload and then only you will be able to create that it's like simple uh, express mvc app which you might have already done it so i'm just uh, not focusing much on the logic part and here inside auth service inside auth service we can we can create our method like what is this export const create user and it's a sync method and it will you will get the input object input object is of some type any let's say and we will add some typings later once we receive this thing so create user we are already exporting this async input we can create some models in our models folder let's say the register input is our first model so inside that or you can call it as auth.model.ts inside that we can create a simple register input export interface and in this payload we wanted to have email is of type string it's like an interface username is of type string password is another attribute then we have image it's an optional of type string bio is an optional of type string okay and this registry input is something which we can use inside auth service considering that this is a kind of input we are going to get and now once we receive all the the parameters what we are going to do we are going to just use the prisma client and uh, store this data so here cons dot email we can just say input dot email you can do trim you can sanitize it and all these things you can do same i can do for username and password so these all things are required i'm just worried about only the required things okay then we can do the joy validation and all these things and then finally we can start creating the user first of all we need to create a hash password of this user because we are sending the password in the body so we can use a big crypt library for that we have to import the big crypt big crypt from big crypt js because we have to create a big crypt version of the password so here i can do big crypt dot hash and we are passing the password because this we are going to generate the hash for the password hash password we are going to save 
const user and now we can just simply do is const user prisma prisma we have imported from the prisma client await prisma dot user dot we have all the methods i'm talking about create here you can see these are the prisma client api create create many find first find many update update many and uh, do we have something like save no and then you can see all these things group update update many find delete many delete create many create count aggregate here we are talking about create so inside create you have to pass this object and inside this object you have two things data that is actually your payload and if you wanted to select a particular things after your insertion is done you can specify it here so inside data you have username you have email you have password which is the hash password we have converted that and uh, let's ignore the optional properties and once that is done we can re return email you have to specify them as a like this email true username true because i don't want it to return the password which has been saved so i'm just returning only email and the username once the insert is done and after everything is done what we can do is we have to return the token right so this is the the user object and we can generate the token so we can call the method generate token or let's keep it like this on sign up it will just it we are going to return only the user object but uh, when you are doing login we will generate the token if the login is successful right so now in the same way we can create our login and we can use that login from our controller method so here export const login and here the payload will be let's say any and we inside this we are getting the email and the password these are the two attributes we are getting we will add the proper typings and all here we are just talking about the logic right now here instead of prisma.user.create we will do find unique right because we want to match the username and the password first of all find unique where because email is unique in the database where email is whatever we are passing just remove this close so it's like the the where where close we are adding now if this is true after this you can select a particular properties i wanted to select email true username also i wanted to return and the password because password match we have to do that we haven't done the password match so from the where close we are returning these three four properties and here we can say if we got the user object that means user exists in the database we have to create a match with the password for the password so here we can just do is decrypt dot compare is the method and here we are what we are comparing the password which we got it from the payload body and user dot password and if both are if we found the match then what we need to do if we got the match that means user exist in the system with the exact same email and password so we can return the required things from the api we can return the email okay email is user dot email and here username and we also have a token property so we are calling generate token 
from somewhere and we are passing the user object so it's all about like how to generate the token when you are passing some kind of a payload you can use some kind of a, a secret key and the expiry and with the help of all these things you can generate a token so here i am using one utility and inside that we can create that method utils let's say i'm calling that as a token uh, utils token utils dot ts file that is nothing but okay how to generate the token using jwt dot sign your user object secret and the expiry okay let's keep it any or we have to define the the user model first user model contains all the attributes about the user because user model we are using at lot of different places so let's create a user model i mean in typescript it's better to define all the models user.model.ts and here we can say export interface user and define all the properties id is of type number i mean it's all about all the columns which we have added in the database this is of type string that is required email is required password is required uh, rest all the things like we have optional properties like say bio which is can be string or null image that is also can be a string and null and other relationships like we have articles also those all the other model properties we will add export interface user so we can specify we can import this user model here that's it so we can call this generate token method from the auth service we have to import it that's it so this is all about our login and register right so you can see what i mean we have done this kind of a code hundreds hundred of the time hundred times i mean it's not like first time you are writing express controller and uh, receiving the payload from the request.body and saving into the database it's all about like how to do the same thing with the prisma here we are doing just calling the create method after generating the hash password and here we are doing the find first find unique based on the email and if the email is unique user has been received which is not null we will compare the password if password is also matched then we will generate the token and return this payload to the user okay so now let's plug in the apis with the router here let's add a couple of apis first is register another one will be the login right and then another one we can have is post login when you are trying to pass the token in the header then you can also call get your own user data okay so i can have get user another thing is users login this is http post same request response and here we are passing request.body.user i will use login which i will import okay i think this is imported then current user so here we will call another method is get current user now you might be wondering like how we can get a user data so what we are doing what is the flow simple is a sign up okay you know your username password you will do the login you will get the token from that and then you will just hit any other protected api when you hit any other protected api in that case you will pass the token which you received as a bearer token inside authorization header okay you will send this inside authorization header and then protected api will decode the token decode the token and it will extract the user from this 
so we will know who is the current logged in user i mean this is the same flow you do with auth0 or any other kind of a login mechanism you first do the login you get the token you pass the token in the authorization header we decode the token check the validity of the token and from inside the token you get the user metadata so with the whole process if user is logged in user token is valid at the end you are able to capture the user information and from that you will know okay this is the logged in user and you can return the logged in user data so here the last api is uh, get current user we will decide what how we are going to deal with this first of all we have to create one middleware what that middleware will do is that middleware will check which api is a protected api which api is a public api for us let's say the user registration should be a public api login should be public api but when you're trying to get your own information this should be a protected api so here i will create some middleware inside our utils we can create that middleware that middleware is let's say auth.ts and i think i already imported express jwt that middleware we can use to create a auth middleware so const auth here i do have let's say this is required so i can use jwt which is coming from express jwt so this library i'm using to validate the token and this is already providing this middleware you don't need to do a lot of things inside jwt you pass the object and what all things you need to pass you will pass the secret using which you have created the token express.env a process.env jwt secret if you don't have then i am just passing super secret okay first argument is a secret then another argument is a token we have to pass the token and how we can get the token we have to call we have to define one method which is going to extract the token from the headers and then algorithm i mean if it is a type script we have used then it would have been easy to pass all the parameters these are three parameters okay and then another is we have function which we need to define calls to get token from headers so here what we are doing let's say calls to get token from headers we have to return the token okay so token is in the form of bearer token so here we are getting request inside request we have headers inside header we are looking for authorization and which is of type string okay and this will return either string or null i mean we are writing typescript so it's better do it in the right way so what we are checking if there is a request request dot headers dot authorization if it is there request dot headers dot authorization then what we need to do is we can return request dot headers dot authorization dot split because they will be separated by space bearer space token and i will return one otherwise i will return null you can do the checks okay it is following the the regex because the token authorization should contain something like this bearer space your token so here we are doing this this is the auth middleware 
and you can pass auth dot required wherever you wanted to protect the route so let's go to our routes inside auth controller if i wanted to protect this then i can just use this so here from here we are doing export default auth and inside controller we are importing it auth what's the problem here okay and auth dot required that means this is required and we have added this middleware that will validate the token and it will decode the token and it, it, it will populate the user object inside the request object request dot user this is what it does so now i can use this api for that so get current user and i can pass request dot user dot username okay and uh, this request is of type uh, so we have to customize the request so sometimes we have to actually customize the request object so what we can do is we can create a dot d dot ts file user request dot d dot ts and here we can say okay inside we are already using the namespace express and we are overriding the definition of request it can may contain user and dot username okay this works now after declaring the type definition for this request object request.user.username and we have to create this get current user inside our service so we go to auth service inside auth service we will be calling export const get current user get current user it is doing a sync and it we are what we are doing we are passing the username which is i think unique async username and we will do all the other things here let's say const user and we can do await prisma dot uh, user dot find unique this is prisma client api we are using and we can specify the where close where username is username okay and if it is found then select all these properties so we are selecting only email is a true and just return email and username that should be enough and we can so after returning this we can return the user that's it it's just like okay i'm logged in user give me my of a user object that's it and this is being called from the controller user login and here we are doing get current user uh, string undefined is not assignable to type string i think this will always be there so get current user this is always expecting a string so what we can do is let's go to our controller get current user here we can just just type cast it as a string and this should solve our problem request dot user dot username yeah this is okay so we created a simple auth apis similarly let's create an article controller inside article controller because here we are going to do a lot of things once user is logged in you can fetch all the articles you can also fetch the articles by the logged in user right user is already logged in we already know the username of logged in user so you can fetch the all the articles of the logged in user 